107.5 WGCI, the size number one for hip-hop and R&B. You know what it is, baby. It's the morning show with the Destin legend, Leon Rogers. That be me. Of course, Corey B is hanging out for Kendra G. Good morning. And myself, the shortest name man in Chicago, Kyle. We have a very special guest in the studio yeah. right now. This brother right here with a brand new show yeah. on the CW20. Black yeah. man on TV. Hey, I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What's on, up? Dude. Chicago, give it up for Karama. Yeah. I got hold on before we even get started. Yes, I gotta ask this growing up, did you used to get we're gonna party? Come on, yes, I forever. I was like, there's no way I, I could have been his friend. I used to tell people a little bit that Lionel Richie was my uncle. Yeah, yeah that's that's there's no way I could have been his friend in high school and not do that. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> First that and foremost, so congratulations on the show. Yeah, yeah man. Thank you, man. You it's know, that just in itself is a kind of a big deal. Man, it's been a dream of mine since I was a kid to yeah. have my own daytime talk show for you know, they don't give too many black folks their own show. Right now Absolutely. we're right now we're in the space right now with Jennifer, Tamara and all of us and I feel blessed to now be a part of that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Sure, but, but more sure. importantly, um just coming from me being a black man in America, our young boys don't have anybody to look at. We had Montel, you had Arsenio Hall, Chris Spencer for a while, vibe. And you got the uh, Montel haircut too, so <laughs> So, the, so, the, so I'm just saying, to see you on, brother, it's kind of like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes I feel like the black man's voice is not heard mm. on certain yeah. things. Mm. So for you being in that position, do you feel like there's any pressure or any weight on your shoulders, or are you just doing you? No, I feel it's 100% pressure and weight, and I accept it wholeheartedly. Yeah. Mm. Like, one of the things on my show that, like... Um, I tell people all the time is that when people see traditionally on, on daytime talk shows when they see black folks coming out they're wilding out and so people are like oh you got us coming on here and acting crazy and I say that's the pain that you're seeing mm -hmm. and for me once I see that pain I know how to heal it and so like I don't look at them as being crazy wilding out I'm like okay good you, you got some trauma in there something's going on you got to get it out you've been mad at your mother you've been mad at your boyfriend you've been mad at your sister for a while now let me figure out to heal it and like let me tell you something we had this brother on the other day that like I mean, at the end of the segment, the way this brother came together and like opened up, I was like, you know what? God has me right where I need to be. And Ooh, I was very The confirmation. The confirmation. You That's know what dope. I mean? Yeah. yeah That's sure. It's a good time, though. Speaking of, of, of pain and dealing with that and being a place where you can kind of address it and allow yeah. people to deal with it, you've dealt with it personally in your own life. Yeah. You talked a little bit about the situation with your son and some of the troubles he might have had with substance abuse and, and things of that nature. Uh, one, that's brave of you and your son to even yeah, deal with that on a public it. platform that way. And secondly, like, what made you comfortable enough to actually present your personal issues to the world? Well, the thing is, for me on my show, I'm like, if anybody gonna come on there and be vulnerable, I have to be, I have to display the same behavior. So I'm not gonna ask my guests to do anything that I wouldn't do. And so, you know, my son, he, he for anybody who doesn't know, my son um, overdosed in 2020 and I found him dead on the floor almost wow. dead on the floor I mean it killed me I feel like every time I start talking about the story I feel like I want to cry um, it's my, my oldest son and I, I didn't know that he was on drugs I didn't know what was going on um, and so when I found him it, it, I went into dab mode got him saved he's been two years sober now which is a good, good. thing um, but the thing was is that it's been something where it was like I needed people to know like you can make it through this and like if, if I'm going through this it might be happening in your life this is what I did this is how I helped and it was really my son that said, Dad, I'm ready just to tell people that they can be better, you know what I mean? Because now he's at a place where he feels confident in his sobriety. He's making the right choices. And so, you know, that's why we did the episode. And I'm very happy about it. It did very well, so. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Dope. Yeah. Dope. Um, the talk show, you were saying that it was like a dream come true, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 You're talking about Montel. That's the reason I shaved my head. And you know that's what, what it is? That you yeah. got the blaze on. Exactly. That's what you were <laughs> yeah, like, how did you come to, to that place? Like, how did you know that that's what you wanted to do? Um, Because uh, I'm nosy as hell, first of all. Okay. Uh, okay. I, grew, okay. I grew up in a house full of women. My si I'm the youngest for four sisters, my single mother. And I always was in people's business. It's just by, by nature. I was like... <laughs> We, we when they was in the barbershop when we was in the hairdresser I was in people business when they would come home they in people business and so I just grew up wanting to be in people's business and so this seemed like the right career path um, plus you know I, I worked in social service for many years where I help people and so it was just always like how can I combine my, my nosiness with the fact that I want to help people yeah. And um, talk show and plus I grew up on talk shows like I, you know I'm 42 and I, I used to run home to watch uh, Montel, Sally, Ooh, you know, all these shows, Donna you, all these shows from back in the day because it made me feel like 
Like I was, I, I could, I could see myself in some ways. I remember the first time we got evicted, um, and we had to move out in the middle of the night, and we had to move into this hotel. Me and all my sisters, I, I thought we were the only people in the world that got evicted. And then I remember, like a week later, I saw it on like I can't even remember the show now, but it was like some episode about abuse, drug abuse, and like my family's living out of a car because we got evicted or something. I was like, oh, are we not the only ones? Wow. Oh, and you don't understand for a young kid that little bit of seeing myself though I never would put myself back in a situation, made me feel like, okay, maybe I can be better and maybe I'm not alone. And so, you know. Karam, I, I want to go back to your whole situation yeah. with your son because you said something that, that, that hit me. Like, every time you talk about it, you want to cry. Like, yeah. how did you deal with... Because I know sometimes when things happen to our kids, like you said, you had no idea uh -huh. your son was doing this, but you're a good parent, right? And I tell people this all the time, we can't monitor and control our kids 24-7. Yes. When they step outside in that world, it's a whole nother playground. Yeah. How did you deal with, or did you have feelings of like, I failed as a parent when you saw that right there? Because I know there's some things I've been through with my daughter, I'm like, well, man, maybe I wasn't the parent she needed for that yeah. situation. Did you have any feelings like that? And if so, how did you deal with it? I had a whole bunch of guilt around it. Mm -hmm. Like, um, because I'm trained in this as well. Mm -hmm. So it was like, not only am I his parent, but I'm also, I'm his father, but also I'm trained in this. I should have seen the signs. Like when my clients come in, I can help them identify signs immediately. And what I realized for me is that um, I think we a lot of times put people into categories and the boxes. So like I realized with my sons, my younger son is the son who gave me issues. So he was the ish, the son that I watched, and my mm -hmm. oldest son was the one that I was like the good one, always did what I he got to worry about. Yeah, I ain't got to worry about. It. I used to say that out loud. I ain't got to worry about him. He the good one. And so I realized that I did a disservice to him as a parent by putting him in a box and not letting him be a human being, mm -hmm. not letting him be holistic. And um, and and I had guilt around that but then I realized as well that I don't need to have that guilt because what we do as parents and what we do as a community is we always step up and we always show that we are going to be there for you no matter what and so by finding him supporting him him being two years sober now I'm like I didn't need to have that guilt because I did exact he needed this lesson he needed this journey he needed this moment right now so that he could be the man that I'm looking at right now so proud of mm -hmm. but as he's this man right now I no longer put him in boxes He's no, he no longer is like my young son, the one that gave me some stuff issues, and my older one, the good one. I'm like, y'all are both human beings who could be good, bad, and in between. And human. Y'all my sons. Y'all my, my sons. Son. That's yeah. So now I'm going to check right. up on y'all equally. Right. Right. Um, and so that's the advice I give to people. First of all, check up on your children equally. Exactly. Don't give. And check up on your family. Don't just think because this sister is a strong one that she can handle it all. Yes. She could be going through some depression. You know, don't just think because this this guy, he go to work, he handling everything with the bills, that he's not struggling in other areas. Let people be human beings. Yeah. I feel that. Hey, yo, everybody, man, please check out Karamo weekdays. 12 noon yeah, on the CW man. 26. Yes. Really Excited. quick, if you want to see the brother in person, man, maybe y'all going to the Bulls game tonight? Yeah, I'm going to the Bulls game. Come, come to the Bulls game. game. What's happening with that? Yeah, come to the Bulls games. We're going to have, we're doing a little bit about, uh, we're talking about voter registration and okay. making sure people are voting. I mean, today's the last day for midterm elections. Uh, make sure y'all get out and vote because, you know, they are trying to silence us. Um, and so we need to make sure that our voices are heard. A lot of times we just wait for a presidential election. We need to make sure that we're voting in these midterms. Um, and so we just got some fun. Play a little ball, predict, you know, have predict, a drink. predict the game score tonight, and then we're gonna let you slide up out of here. Oh, no, nah, y'all trying to get come on. Listen, I just got the show. You trying to get me canceled already in Chicago? He might, you trying to get me canceled already? You might have to play of Zach Levine and them. Yeah. You might have to shoot them up. Y'all don't want me to play, all right? Y'all really gonna lose then. Y'all have me in there. Congratulations once again, Karan. Thank Karan, you. Man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Every day at 12 noon, right here. Appreciate, appreciate you, bro. Yeah.